Alright, looks like we're live. Hello everyone, and welcome to yet another recreational programming session. Probably the last one. Um, not sure 100%, but quite likely it is the last one. Hello everyone, hello, hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's make a little bit of an announcement and just like let everyone know that we're streaming and writing. So this is going to be a red circle live on Twitch. And what are we doing uh, today? Well, today we're doing the uh, Perceptron in C. And today is quite likely the last stream. So, and the reason is why today is quite likely the last stream is because tomorrow is March 11th, right? And uh, Russian government uh, promised that on March 11th they're gonna try to do something with the internet like they didn't specify exactly what they're gonna try to do it was like really weird but I suppose they're gonna try to isolate it from the rest of the world I do not believe that they're competent enough to do that properly but uh, they still may disrupt the um, you know the internet within the Russia so uh, it's quite likely gonna be gonna be the last uh, the last stream so maybe I still gonna have like, the access to the internet to the majority of the world but I'm not sure if the streaming is gonna be possible you know you know what I mean so yeah <laughs> Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and by the way, check out the donate command, right? Uh, so, donate and help uh, Ukrainian people in these difficult times. And I'm going to put all of the links uh, for, for the nations in the description as well after the stream um, for, for the people who's watching on YouTube. So, yeah. Um, mm -mm. what about videos maybe i'm gonna keep making videos right so but they're gonna be offline videos mm -mm. Uh, i was actually afraid that you were in serious trouble luckily internet is the reason well i might be i might be in the future in serious troubles because of what i say on the internet uh, but not right now our government is busy a little bit if it becomes less busy and didn't and don't go away they may start focusing on regular people like myself uh will you still upload youtube videos yes probably quite likely i'm not 100 percent sure but you can basically join our discord server i'll like post an announcements there good luck with everything thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you so i really like to address one thing uh people are constantly harassing russians on the internet asking them to protest and overthrow putin so i really want to address that because it is um in russia there's currently a very interesting situation right so majority of uh, people in russia actually uh support putin because they fully believe the propaganda to the point that if you show them what's going on in Ukraine right now, uh, if you show them the photos, if you show them the videos, they will literally brush it off saying that it's fake or it's staged, etc., etc., etc. So it is pointless to show the majority of Russian people what is actually going on in Ukraine. They just don't believe it. And it is actually quite disturbing and it is very depressing and quite frustrating, I would say. So, and currently, if you are, if you try to protest in Russia, you're basically going to be detained and very likely tortured. And then you will face a jail time up to, uh, up to 15 years. So, if I go and protest on the streets right now, uh, basically, it's not going to be effective. And I'll probably uh, risk serious um, damage to my mental and physical health. So I mean, it is basically not effective in Russia as of right now at all. So the only thing I can do right now is to use my dying platform to, um, you know, to ask people to donate and help Ukrainian people. So that's the only thing I can actually effectively do more or less. So and I really apologize to Ukrainian people for what's going on. Um, I don't waste forgiveness, I don't expect forgiveness, but I just wanted you to know that I'm actually terribly uh, sorry. Anyways, so um, that's everything I wanted to say. Um, 
So uh, today's stream is actually inspired by the latest Veritasium video. Um, have you guys uh, seen the latest Veritasium video? It's actually quite interesting. Uh, so let me actually Google for that. Veritasium, Veritasium. So it, it was basically about uh, hybrid computers, the computers that base uh, both analog and digital ones. And the justification for the analog computer was that it makes it easier for machine learning and like specific ne neural networks and stuff like that. So I'm going to give the link uh, to the chat right now. Mm. So don't you make yourself vulnerable by asking for support for Ukrainian as Russian? Yes. I fucking, I'm fucking am. So I can face a jail time uh, for just saying what I just said. But I say that in English, right? And uh, the Russian government is very busy on the other side of the, of the country right now. So that's the only thing I bet on. Uh, and later, I only hope that maybe the regime will finally fall or maybe I'll have an opportunity to flee somewhere, maybe to Kazakhstan or at least China. I don't fucking know. Maybe at some point, uh, you know, it's just like another totalitarian regime is going to be more safe for me than the current one. Who knows? Uh, I don't actually know. Mm. So anyway, right. Um, oh, for, for people who don't know, like I hear people ask me to flee to uh, Europe, right, uh, because of the situation in Russia. I can't do that. You guys don't understand. Google up Novosibirsk. Uh, check out in Google where Novosibirsk is located. It is closer to China than to, uh, to Europe, than to Moscow. Uh, the distance between... Um, between Novosibirsk and Moscow is like 4k kilometers and the distance between Novosibirsk and the closest uh, China border is 700 kilometers. So, yeah. Come to India, maybe. India doesn't sound that bad, so maybe I'm gonna flee to India. We'll see, we'll see. And to be fair, because of the current situation, it's kind of difficult to flee anywhere because um, Honestly, nobody really waits me anywhere, so I don't know. I'll probably quite likely stay in here and we'll just prepare for the um, for the upcoming difficult times. And I don't know if the uh, like economical crisis in Russia is going to be as bad as what's going on in Ukraine right now. So I'm kind of ready. Um, so yeah. Will you upload port source code as soon as it's ready, right? As soon as, as soon as I'm done with the uh, design of port, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna upload uh, the source code. I'm not gonna stop developing port. Uh, port is gonna be you know, I'm gonna develop it offline essentially. Maybe occasionally I'm gonna be recording uh, the sessions, right? So and upload them to YouTube as soon as I have an opportunity, right? Uh, but we'll see, we'll see. So yeah. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. If you need anything other than subscriptions, I don't really need any subscriptions right now. The, the Twitch is not going to pay me anything. So if you really want to support, use the command donate and check out the link in there. Uh, don't subscribe to me. Check out the donate command. Uh, send money there, not me. Um, okay. Mm, let's continue. Mm -mm. Uh, now, so there is a very specific section uh, of this video, of this Veritasium video. Right, so let me actually, let me actually go there. Mm, so this is going to be description, uh, references, and this is the We're Building Computers Wrong. It's a very cool video. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, interestingly enough, I heard about analog computers like a long time ago, like more than 10 years ago when I was in uni. Um, our, one of our professors was talking about um, analog computers based on 
uh, water pipes that were solving differential equations. So um, as far as I know, um, the Veritasium name is Derek, right? So the Derek was talking also also was talking about the solving differential equations and, like that, and stuff like that. But he used uh, the electricity for, for that, and we talked about something similar, um, but uh, with like you know um, water pipes and stuff like that. Uh, so there is an explanation of what is the perceptron in uh in this video so and i really want to listen to that specific explanation so let me actually turn on the turn on the stuff and uh let's go there mm. never going to get the exact same answer plus think about manufacturing analog computers there's always going to be some variation of objects so let's go a so. comeback it all speaking. starts with artificial intelligence. A machine has been programmed to see and to move objects. AI isn't new. The term was coined back in 1956. In 1958, Cornell University psychologist Frank Rosenblatt built the perceptron, designed to mimic how neurons fire in our brains. So here's a basic model of how neurons in our brains work. An individual neuron can either fire or not. So its level of activation can be represented as a one or a zero. The input to one neuron is the output from a bunch of other neurons. But the strength of these connections between neurons varies. So each one can be given a different weight. Some connections are excitatory, so they have positive weights, while others are inhibitory, so they have negative weights. And the way to figure out whether a particular neuron fires is to take the activation of each input neuron and multiply by its weight, and then add these all together. If their sum is greater than some number, called the bias, then the neuron fires. But if it's less than that, the neuron doesn't fire. As input, Rosenblatt's perceptron had 400 photocells arranged in a square grid to capture a 20 by 20 pixel image. You can think of each pixel as an input neuron, with its activation being the brightness of the pixel. Although, strictly speaking, the activation should be either 0 or 1, we can let it take any value between 0 and 1. All of these neurons are connected to a single output neuron, each via its own adjustable weight. So to see if the output neuron will fire, you multiply the activation of each neuron by its weight and add them together. This is essentially a vector dot product. If the answer is larger than the bias, the neuron fires, and if not, it doesn't. Now, the goal of the perceptron was to reliably distinguish between two images, like a rectangle and a circle. For example, the output neuron could always fire when presented with a circle, but never when presented with a rectangle. To achieve this, the perceptron had to be trained, that is, shown a series of different circles and rectangles, and have its weights adjusted accordingly. We can visualize the weights as an image, since there's a unique weight for each pixel of the image. Initially, Rosenblatt set all the weights to zero. If the perceptron's output is correct, for example, here it's shown a rectangle and the output neuron doesn't fire, no change is made to the weights. But if it's wrong, then the weights are adjusted. The algorithm for updating the weights is remarkably simple. Here, the output neuron didn't fire when it was supposed to because it was shown a circle. So to modify the weights, you simply add the input activations to the weights. If the output neuron fires when it shouldn't, like here when shown a rectangle, well then you subtract the input activations from the weights. And you keep doing this until the perceptron correctly identifies all the training images. It was shown that this algorithm will always converge so long as it's possible to map the two categories into distinct groups. The perceptron. That's it. It's that simple. And this is a, such a good explanation. You can just take that explanation and turn it into code. And that's what I want you to do today actually uh so yeah and we, uh, we're probably gonna do that in c because yeah uh it's it's easier for me to do that in c because there is no like distraction or anything like that it's a, it's a very good explanation and i just wanted to play with that idea and implement something so let's go ahead and do that uh so 
I really apologize for the echo. The echo was due to Mike picking up the uh, the sound from the from the headphones. So that's basically what was happening. Um, so interestingly enough, like I haven't programmed in uh, like for two weeks already uh, because of the current situation in the world. So essentially, if you if you take a look at my like uh, you know contribution graph. And haven't been programming for like two weeks or something. So if I make a lot of mistakes or not as good at like at programming as I used to be, uh, I really apologize. I'm really sorry. <laughs> right, I haven't programmed for two weeks. Uh, essentially, because uh, for all of these days I've been uh, doom scrolling and uh, preparing to move back to to my parents. Essentially, so that's basically why. So I hope I hope I didn't forget how to program at all. So we'll see. Um, let me uh, create a separate folder and we're going to call it perceptron. Uh, perceptron and I'm going to create uh, a file. Uh, maybe I'm going to call it main.c. Uh, right, so let's just create uh, a hello world, a simple hello world. Nothing particularly special, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to say hello uh, world. Right. And there we go. So we'll need something to build this hello world. Uh, bin sh. And um, it's going to be cco main main.c. Um, do I? I probably want to enable all of the possible warnings. Uh, actually, I, I, they don't have to be errors. I just want extra warnings. Maybe some uh, debugging symbols and stuff like that. Right. Mathematical library. We'll, we'll probably need mathematical library because the the cells are going to be floats, right? We're going to do stuff with floats. Um, so and because of that, we maybe we'll need things like f absf and um, yeah. So I, I think they are part of the uh, of the math library. So if I try to build this entire thing, um, it should be building correctly. But I also like to uh, you know trace everything I basically build in here. As you can see, it just prints the command. Right. Okay, so uh, let's implement the algorithm that takes the input, the current uh, weights, and produces the output somehow. So such algorithm should be very simple. Um, so let's define sort of like a global size of the perceptron, right? So we're going to have some width. Uh, let's let's say that it's going to be 20 by 20, right? Uh, Heisenbot, I don't know what it is. Uh, I think it's one of the uh, one of the folders in here. Uh, that's what it is. Um, okay, so let's have the algorithm. So here we're going to accept. So we're going to do all of the weights and all of the biases and stuff like that in floats. Uh, so we're going to have an input and input is going to be uh, array uh, height by width, right? So because the arrays are stored uh, row wise, uh, so basically it's just like a bunch of rows but stretched like that. Um, because of that, I use height as the first one. And I do know that you cannot pass the arrays in C by value, right? So this array will be decayed to a pointer, but I like to provide the uh, the dimensions anyway for the documentation purposes. Though this one is not really going to decay into float pointer, it's more of a, it's going to decay into the pointer to array of the uh, of the size width because this kind of um, information of the type is needed to actually properly, uh, you know, index the array, right? So it's not precisely going to be a pointer to just float, it's going to be a pointer to an array of floats of size width, right? So it only decays on the first layer of the array, usually. Uh, and in here, we're going to have uh, weights, right? So this is going to be weight. Uh, none of that really matters. It's just like a technical details that you have to keep in mind in case you're going to have some, uh, you know, unexpected behavior. But generally, it doesn't matter. Uh, I want to pass those things by reference anyway. Um, so this is going to be inputs and this is going to be weights. So, and this entire thing is supposed to return some sort of an output. We're going to have output, which is zero, right? And we're going to just return that specific output. So, and let's just go ahead and iterate all of that. So we're going to iterate from zero to height, right? So it can be plus plus y. Then we're going to iterate the columns. Uh, so let's width plus plus x. 
And in here, we take uh, an input, right, uh, yx, multiply them by weights, right, uh, as it's, it's explained in the, uh, in the video, and just add all of that to the output. That is it. This is the entire algorithm that uh, basically, you know, detects, right, it uses the trained model, so it takes the model, then it takes the inputs, and then just answer the question, uh, answers the question, right? So it categorizes the the input into one of the two categories, right? So the perceptron works uh, well with two categories. I suppose for it to work better with um, like more categories, maybe you need to add more hidden layers, right? But that specific model doesn't really have any hidden layers, right? So there's only input layer and a single like output neuron, right? Uh, <clears throat> a single output neuron. Mm, cheers, by the way. Uh, I'm drinking water, not tea today. So, um, <laughs> rest in peace, Russian economy. Anyway. Mm. So, um, how should I call this function, by the way? Uh, how should I call this function? Um, apply weights uh, to inputs. Right, like I'm not uh, a machine learning person, right? Is there any term in uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning for an act of taking the model and passing the inputs through the model and getting the outputs? How do you usually call such act in um, in artificial intelligence and computer science. I have no idea. Is there some uh, convenient term? Uh, advance, forward pass, predicting. I, I like the forward pass. Um, feed forward. Okay. Categorize. No, no, no. Training is a, is a different process. Uh, forwarding. Mm, all right. So I'm, I think it's going to be forwarding. All right. Um, feed. Uh, forward, right. I'm not really familiar with terminology, so I really apologize for that. Uh, anyways, so now we may want to probably allocate some uh, some memory for both of these things somewhere, maybe in a static memory, so we can allocate uh, global inputs. Uh, you know what? I kind of like type um, this signature a lot of times, so maybe I can just do something like type dev. Uh, let's call it something like maybe layer, right? And it's going to be a, a layer height and width. So that way I should be able to do something like this, right? Uh, there we go. So, and then I'm going to have uh, layer inputs, uh, layer inputs and layer weights. So that way I can do feed forward, right? And in, in the feed forward. Uh, first comes inputs and the second come, uh, comes weights. And it also would be nice to mark this as static, right? I'll mark this as static. So, and this entire thing returns the output. It, it, no, it's not, it's not a bias, it's more of an output. And uh, let's actually print the output. Output is going to be equal to this. So right now, all of that is going to be initialized with zero. So I would expect the output to be essentially zero. And it doesn't even compile. Uh, layer, mm -mm -mm -mm. so int in the declaration. Oh, okay, so it has to be float like this. Uh, and then here we're going to have a semicolon. There we go. As you can see, the output is uh, zero. The output is zero. So it would be nice to also have some mechanisms of drawing the rectangles, right? So for instance, um, I want to be able to take the input, right, and fill a particular region with a rectangle. So then I can use that to train something or whatnot. Mm -mm. <laughs> right. Uh, okay, so let's introduce uh, a thing. Layer feel erect. Chat, chat, chat. Do you feel erect? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, good old jokes. Uh, so we're going to accept the rectangle. So we're going to accept the position of the left top um, corner. And then we're going to accept the size of the rectangle. Okay. <sighs> cool. So the question is how we're going to approach this entire stuff. So to simplify myself uh, the work as 
I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to not allow uh, the rectangles that have like zero, um, zero area, right? So this has to be greater than zero and this has to be greater than zero. So it's going to be a little bit easier for me. So uh, now I think I'm going to do x equal to x0. By the way, I have a lot of subscriptions. Uh, thank you very much, everyone who subscribed. Uh, just keep in mind that I'm not going to get any of this money anyway uh, because of the current situation in the world. Um, so and if you want to actually help, right, check out the donate command, exclamation mark donate, and follow the link there. Uh, right, don't give money to me. Um, hello, hello, everyone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, so um, what, am, what, what am I doing in here? I'm not really sure what I'm doing. Uh, so I think I want to convert the rectangles to basically two points like um, you know the left top uh, corner and the bottom right corner so that way it's going to be a little bit easier to just iterate everything and fill with a particular value and since i'm filling something with a particular value it will be nice to actually accept that value in here right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, am I going to join the Russian army? Never. I'm going to resist to that as long as I'm alive. Mm -mm -mm. All right. So uh, we're going to have something like x0 and this one is going to be something like x. But x could be actually, you know, outside of the range of the, um, of the whole area. So maybe it would make sense to clamp. Uh, this entire thing um, to something like clamp uh, clamp i and let's say it's going to be zero and uh, width minus one right so then we're going to have something like a y zero uh, then y and then height there we go so we don't really have a clamp in c so it would be probably nice to introduce it somewhere static inline just in case um, so this is going to be the value and then the lower bound and the higher bound, right? So, and if X is less than low, we're going to basically assign it to low. And if X is greater than high, we're going to assign it to high. And after that, we're going to just return X, right? So this is how we're going to clamp everything. Um, now, so... The next thing is going to be what? I'm going to have x1, which is essentially x0 plus, uh, plus the width. And interestingly enough, um, so if width is 1, uh, this will result in a rectangle of the width 2. So we need to do minus 1, but we have to be careful. What if the width is 0? But it can't be 0 because we asserted that specifically. So I think this is fine. And um, it is positive, it is not zero, and it can actually overflow the, you know, the boundaries of everything. So I think it should be clamped as well. We're going to do clamp uh, this thing, zero uh, width minus one. And we're going to do a similar thing for y as well. So it's going to be x and y. I'm going to replace that and I'm going to assign height to that as well. All right, so we've got two points, and uh, I think we basically checked everything. We clamped everything correctly, and uh, the only thing I need to do now is to just iterate this rectangle and just fill it with values. That way, I'll be able to, um, you know, fill a rectangle of a specific shape. Mm. Clump I sounds like a pasta dish. I hope this pasta chunk can identify spaghetti. Um, isn't clamp I a browser Trojan? Well, if the security of the browser is so low that you can hack it with a clamp function, I'm really disappointed in web development. Mm. I remember some time ago someone knocked on your door and we were all joking about <laughs> RGB agents, but now, oh yeah, uh, now it is not really funny anymore. Um, so interestingly, 
that time it was an actual policeman right but they were not after me they were just like going around saying something about like you know scammers on the internet i don't know why uh but that was weird anyway uh, so what's interesting is that now i need variables to you know iterate all of that so this is going to be x uh, zero so maybe i'm going to call it xi x zero xi less or equal x1 plus plus xi right and then we're going to have uh y y zero y i less or equal y this is actually unreadable to be fair uh plus plus uh y uh, i i would like to call them like this and i think i should be able to but that will shadow uh the existing arguments but maybe that's fine so i don't think there's there are any problems with that uh and by the way i think i should actually iterate it in a slightly different order uh and then i'm gonna assign the value there we go so this is how we fill the specific rectangle uh, this is how we fill the specific rectangle mm -mm -mm. So let me try to maybe compile the entire thing. We don't have assert. This is because you have to explicitly assert stuff. Mm, okay, so everything seems to be compiling. Um, I may try to maybe prepare the inputs. Uh, layer fill rect. Uh, so I'm going to provide the input. Then we're going to say, uh, I don't know, zero, um, zero. The size of the... Um, of the perceptron is 20 by 20 so we can do something like maybe width uh, divided by 2 and height divided by 2 because we always know the size of the perceptron so in here we're gonna have just one uh, and we're gonna try to essentially classify this thing um, right and it, it doesn't do anything because we have nothing in weights right um, so it would be kind of cool to actually see the the layer right so it would be nice to visualize it especially the same way how it was visualized in the in the video right um so thank you so much everyone who is subscribing right now i probably can't uh, go through everyone um thank you thank you thank you um, i really appreciate that but again i'm not going to get any of that money because of the current situation in the world so check the donate command instead all right, check the donate command instead. Mm. So uh, let me let me see some stuff. Let me see some stuff. Let's actually create a function that accepts a layer, right? It accepts a layer and saves the layer as the PPM image, right? Um, I think that's a good idea. Um, so layer save as PPM. Now we're gonna accept the layer, uh, right? And maybe path to to the file file path. Uh, now I'm gonna open the stuff. F open file path, and I'm gonna open it for writing in binary, right? So I'm also gonna close it right away. Uh, and if f is equal to null, that means we didn't succeed opening this thing, right? Uh, and we're going to say that openly, could not open uh, file, and file is this one, and the reason is this one, file path, uh, str error, error, no, and we're going to exit with no zero exit code. It's, it's actually zero code, so we need to do non-zero one. Okay, so PPM. Uh, if you never heard about PPM format, I really recommend to check it out. It is very useful for uh, sort of like debugging, right? If you don't want to um, install any libraries to save in PNG or anything like that, you can just use this raw format. Uh, I'm going to put that link, uh, the link to this format in, format in the description. Right, so um, PPM format. There we go. Mm -mm. I recently learned about percent %m, which will insert the error without passing it as an argument. Really? Uh, just a second. That's actually pretty cool. I saw you talking about this thing in the Discord server, but I didn't like, really pay too much attention to it. Right, so if I say something like uh, error no 69, right, and then I say printf 
error. Let's actually go with nothing, right? So this is going to be error and M. Uh, and if I try to run this entire thing, so we don't have str error, uh, right? So this is going to be string error no. Anything else we need? Exit. So that requires standard library, if I remember correctly. Uh, so layer is unused. Okay, so it says success, which uh, actually gives me hope that it is true. So if I put 69. Okay. Uh, surmount error. What the fuck is this? Sur what the hell is that? That is, this is the weirdest error I've ever seen in my entire life. You know, it would be kind of cool if you put error no 69 and it would say nice instead. <laughs> um, so it occurs when a, uh, an attempt is made to stop RFS uh, while resources are still mounted by a uh, remote machine. What is RFS? It's some sort of a radio frequency system. Uh, file system. Is that the file system? Remote file sharing. Okay. Um, okay. I would really, I would be really glad if it was just a nice error, but it's not a very nice error, unfortunately. Um, <clears throat> it is GNU only. <laughs> Imagine using GNU in 2020. Mm -mm -mm. Alrighty, so uh, let me let me see let me see. Um, okay, so that means I can just like do something like this. Thank you, thank you so much, function. Right, that's pretty cool. Um, now, once we opened it, we need to provide the header for the ppm file. Right, so we need to provide the header for it. Uh, the header. Something I think my shit is falling apart. Um, oh yeah, my my headphones are already falling apart, and uh, I won't won't find any replacement in Russia. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> I, by the way, the, the equipment that I have for streaming is the equipment that I have basically forever, right? So if something breaks, I won't be able to replace anything. If my mic breaks, uh, that's it. So I won't be able to even record the videos. Uh, because there is no any equipment, but that's fine. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. Uh, it's not that important. There are way more important things in life than just, you know, entertainment. Mm, anyway, so uh, if I remember correctly, the header for the uh, for the format that I want to use, uh, start, starts with P6, right, then goes the next line, and then goes the width and height, so we have to provide them as, you know, parameters. And then 255, I don't really remember what it means, but I always put it there. So, and in here we're gonna do width, uh, so this is a width, and this is the height. Uh, so, Biram Benza subscribes, uh, thank you so much everyone who subscribes. Um, I'm sorry for all the mess uh, there, Zodiac. Don't be sorry. Right? You have nothing to do with that. The sub was uh, automated, unfortunately, and uh, no one could predict it would go this bad. Uh, I'll manage to send a couple tea bucks down your way somehow. Uh, in the meantime, let's hope everything gets better. Yeah, I'll hope that everything will, uh, will be sorted out. I really hope so. Uh, but I don't count don't count on being able to send me anything I don't think it's gonna be possible in the near future um, so yeah mm -mm -mm. all right so but thank you thank you so much for all of the subscriptions maybe uh, maybe twitch is not gonna take away all of those money maybe they're gonna keep them on our accounts for for a while until the entire situation is settled is settled. Uh, so, and then maybe they're going to give us to us. Maybe not. I don't really know. I don't count on uh, anything from Twitch and I really don't count on anything anymore. So I'm basically in a full survival mode. Uh, I'm stocking up on food. I'm stocking up on medicine and I'm basically moving back to my parents because we'll have to now take care of each other. So I really don't count on anything at all. Toilet pepper. Well, you have hands. Anyway, <laughs> I'm sorry, it's a joke. Um, or is it? Anyway, uh, so now we need to save everything. So I'm going to iterate through uh, all of the pixels, right? Mm, less than, less than height. 
And then it is going to be something like this. Uh, I've never seen so many hands. <laughs> Um, so, and now we have to actually output um, the pixels by three bytes, right? That's what we have to do. So we'll have to allocate uh, essentially bytes, or maybe we can call it pixel, and there is like a three of them. So, and the question is, what's going to be the color that we're going to use for that? So we can use the red color or maybe blue color or maybe, I don't know. Um, I'm going to go with the red one. So I'm going to take the layers pixel, right? So this is the layer pixel and we're going to use it as essentially as a scalar, right? So this is going to be a scalar and I'm going to just multiply it by 255. Right, and the rest of the stuff is going to be zero. Uh, but here, then I'll have to probably uh, floor it, floor it, and cast it to character, right? So, and then I'll be able to f write this entire thing. I don't remember the signature of f write to be fair. Uh, so, yeah. So the first parameter is going to be the pixels, right? So this is the pixels. So then the size of the buffer that we're trying to, you know, to write. So this is going to be pixel. And how many buffers we want to send? I want to send only one. And the output is going to be basically uh, F, right? So there we go. So that way I can, I can save this entire thing. So let me try to... Uh, compile this entire thing. Uh, we need to add the math, right? I'm adding the math. Uh, anything else? It's not a pixels, right? It's a single pixel. There we go. So uh, as you can see, I'm filling the rectangle within the inputs, right? And then I can try to uh, save it, right? So layer uh, save as ppm. This is going to be inputs and the output is going to be uh, inputs ppm, right? Uh, and let me try to run this entire thing. Weights are unused and we have the PPM file. And if we take a look at it, it is very, very small actually. Look at that. Right. So it's 20 by 20 and I think I filled the rectangle with, um, you know, a 10 by 10, I think. I can always look up actually. Uh, I can always look up. Uh, yeah, yeah, I filled it 10 by 10. So that's why it looks like this. Very small because it's 20 by 20, so um, I don't know. We can have some sort of a scalar specifically for uh, for the output, for the debug output, because this is a debug output. I'm not trying to save it for uh, like for reusage somewhere, right? Um, if I wanted to save uh, like a dump layer to the hard drive so I can load it later, right, recover the the, uh, the model later, I would probably just like a save the whole layer um, like in in binary, right? So just serialize it and just save it to uh, to the hard drive because it's IEEE 754 anyway, um, little engine, right? So I can just claim that this is the format of the model and just save it as it is. So it's the, that's the easiest thing to do. But for the debug output, I think it makes sense to introduce something like a PPM uh, scalar, um, right? Scalar. Is that, a, is that E or A? Does anybody know? Is that E or A scalar? Something that scales something. Uh, a, okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Mm, I really like the chat right now. It's just like, ah. Okay. Um, scalar is the value. Scalar is the one that scales. Yeah, I also I actually agree with that. So I'm going to go with E. I think it's a little better. So we're going to scale it by, I don't know, 10, 20, something, something, something. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Scaler, somebody actually sent a link to that. Uh, ooh, a dental instru instrument for removing tata from teeth. I really like this definition. 
that is precisely what I meant when I called this variable. Yes, so it's going to be scalar. Uh, oh, I know why it's called scalar, because to descale the teeth. Yes, it's like descaling uh, of the, um, I don't know, of the, of the kettle or something like that, you know? Uh, coffee machine, yeah. So I learned descaling from uh, James Hoffman videos you, you got me. Uh, I never heard about that uh, word before. So, um, yeah, so we can actually, you know, scale this entire thing. And how are we going to be scaling all of that? That's a very interesting question. Um, so I'm going to literally multiply them, right? PPM scalar uh, and also PPM scalar, like so. So essentially, it will mean that we'll have to iterate a bigger, a bigger thing. Uh, all right. But now here we'll have to essentially divide y, um, yeah, by ppm scalar, right? So we have to divide it to sort of shrink it back, uh, and that way we can scale it a little bit higher, hopefully. So now it's going to be ten times bigger, all right? And if we take a look at this entire thing, uh, it is ten times bigger, as you can see, right? So it's a little better. We can now even say let's make it like fifty times bigger. How about 50 times bigger? Uh, and if I open it, there we go. So it's uh, 20 by 20, but we scaled it, right? So we scaled it, so now we don't have to like zoom in or anything like that. And at any point, I can quite easily just say uh, scalar is going to be one, and I can get the original thing, right? So it's not like I'm losing anything, right? Uh, and all of that for, for debugging anyway. Right. <clears throat> <clears throat> so, um, that is very, very cool. It is very, very cool. So, what's going to be the next thing? Uh, the next thing, we need to generate a bunch of rectangles, right? We need to generate a bunch of rectangles. We need to generate a bunch of circles and uh, basically use all of that to train the perceptron, right? Oh, and the cool thing, by the way, as we train the perceptron, we'll be able to uh you know visualize the model right the same way as it's visualized in the derek's video right because he showed how the uh, circles and rectangles are sort of imprinted in the retina of the perceptron so because it is kind of like a retina right and so some some of the shapes are get imprinted there uh and that's actually very very cool i really like that <clears throat> Dentists pretend they're mathematicians. Yeah, anyway. Um, so, we already can generate a bunch of rectangles. That's for sure. We can already generate them. But we can't generate the, um, the circles, I would say, right? So, maybe this is something that we'll have to do. Uh, layer, uh, fill circle. Uh, we're going to accept the layer. Uh, right, so this, then I'm going to have something like layer, int x, int y. Uh, so this is more of a center, right? So it's x and y of the center. Uh, Chiroptical asks, how did we get here, Mr. Streamer? I don't know. Honestly, I really don't know how that shit has happened. Uh, because nobody took him serious nobody expected that and he fucking did that hmm i don't know honestly i don't know <clears throat> everyone was believing that he's a thief he's a thief but he's not a murderer it turned out that he is it's really weird What's up, Oliver? What's up, what's up? Um, um, hopefully we won't get cut off and it doesn't have to be your uh, last, uh, last stream. Yeah, yeah I, I also hope so. But just in case, um, so I decided to make a last stream. <clears throat> people just didn't look at Crimea. Sir. Yeah, for some reason, people didn't still take that seriously enough. Which is weird. Mm -hmm. Mm 
Yeah. Some people still don't, yes. Are you afraid of being conscript? Uh, not as much as people in Kharkiv. I'm pretty sure people in Kharkiv are more scared than me of being conscript. And of course, I'm going to resist to that as much as I can. <clears throat> So, uh, fill the circle, right, so we're going to have a radius, we're going to have a radius. So, what I'm thinking is that we can do a similar thing with two points, right, so P0 and P1, uh, and essentially just iterate that rectangle, or rather a square, right, in case of circle it's going to be a square, and just use the regular formula, the, the circle formula, x uh, squared plus y squared equals the radius squared. Uh, so, and yeah, that way we can generate a circle. Um, so let's go. Um, do I need to say that they assert that the radius should not be uh, equal to zero or less than zero or something like that? Um, mm -mm. So x0 is going to be x minus r. So if it's equal to 0, right, uh, if it's going to be a 1. So yeah, I, I think it's a good idea. So this is going to be also clamp i, uh, 0 width minus 1. Right. Then y0, uh, clamp i, y minus r, uh, height, and like that. And the x1 is essentially going to be that, but with a plus sign. Right, with a plus sign. <clears throat> Int y... Two, two, two. Mm. I think int y should be h not w. Uh, probably, yeah, thank you, thank you so much. Right. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Uh -huh. So everything seems to be okay, let's go and iterate uh, through this entire thing. y1 plus plus y. Uh, for x, x, 0, x, x, 1, plus, plus, x. Right, layer, um, y, x. And we also need to accept the value, right? So it's going to be a float value. Uh, but we should not set anything in here, right? What we have to do now is uh, take the square of x plus square of y, and check if it's uh, less or um, less or equal than the square of the radius, right? And if it is, right? If it is, uh, only then we can do this entire thing. <clears throat> uh, so that's the way we can draw a circle. So we can go ahead and just like check if it works or not. So the scalar is fifty, and now I can. A fill the circle right so this is the circle the we're gonna fill it in the center right so with uh, that and that and the radius is gonna be let's set the radius maybe half of the width right so in if I try to run this entire thing something doesn't really work because all of that has to be C uh, right mm -hmm. so this is not particularly correct because we should use X uh, the distance between the car, the x and y and c x c y. So what I have to do in here is d x. Uh, so x minus c x and x y. Uh, and in here we're going to have d x d x d y uh, d y. And that should be more than enough. Okay, so if I take a look at the inputs right now, this is not inputs, and there we go, here is the circle. It's a little bit scuffed, and this is because the uh, width and height of the, um, of the perceptron is even. If we make it a little bit odd, I think it could be aligned a little bit better, right? So if I do like, uh, not really plus one, I could just like make like this. 
Right, and if we take a look at this entire thing, it is more or less aligned. So this is the circle. Uh, because of the, such a low resolution, I don't know if it's a good idea. So we can uh, we can just like give more uh, resolution to the perceptron. So what if we say that we're gonna have like 100 by 100? So this is gonna be like literally 10,000 of those, and uh, we can um, reduce the scalar to something like this. Uh, okay, so look at that. The size of this image is 18 megabytes. My God. And that looks a little bit more roundish. So that looks a little bit more roundish. We know how to draw circles. And now we can just like generate random circles and shit and try to train the perceptron. So, yeah. Um, interestingly enough, do we have to train that on the same data, right? Do we have to train it on the same data? We can try to pre-generate a bunch of rectangles and a bunch of circles, right? And keep training this entire thing uh, on the same data over and over again until it's trained and then try to, uh, you know, check if the model works on the new data, if you know what I mean, right? So let's actually try to save the um, uh, the layer, right? So we need to we need to be able to dump the current state to to the hard drive. So we, we can save it as ppm, but ppm is purely for debugging purposes, right? It's purely for debugging for the actual storage. Uh, we can do something like layer save. Um, just save, I suppose, right? Save as bin. Uh, save as bin. Uh, we're going to accept the layer and we're going to accept the file path. Mm, so file path. There we go. Assert uh, to do layer save save as bin is not implemented yet. Right. And I think we also need the symmetric uh, function load from bin. Uh, load from bin. There we go. So, how are we going to do all of that? I'm going to try to open a file. Uh, f, f open, file path, and we're going to open it for writing. Right. And then I'm going to close this entire thing. If f uh, is not equal, it's actually equal to null. Right. It's actually equal to null. I'm going to do f printf. Uh, std error, std error, uh, error could not open a file s because of m, right? So now I don't have to do str error or anything like that. So this is going to be file path, and then I'm going to exit it with one. And in here, so as already said, I think the easiest thing to do is simply just dump the entire thing. So f write f. Um, not really f, it has to be the layer itself. Then I'm going to do size of the layer, but I don't think it's a good idea because it's a parameter, so it's a pointer. It's not really the size of the whole thing. Right. This one is rather interesting. Okay, so let me let me show you. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if I have a function like this, right, so main void, and uh, full inputs, then full layer, right? And if I try to print all of these things, size of layer, right? Size of layer, and size of layer capital one. So in the first case, I'm taking the size of the variable, and the second case, I take the size of the uh, type and I, uh, my hypothesis is that they're going to be different, right? So I think they're going to be different, and they are. Look at that, because in the first case we have a pointer, and the second case we're taking the size of the two-dimensional arrays. So I think we have to do specifically size of layer. Thank you so much, Ken Thompson and Dennis Ritchie, for such a beautiful type system. I really appreciate that. So. <laughs> Um, okay. Very cool. Uh, now, mm, if zero, 
so we could not open file blah 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 so it has to be size of the type then this is the size of the element that we're trying to save then we're going to save a single element and we're going to be saving it into f right so after that i'm going to just close everything and there we go we essentially uh, dumped the layer right we essentially dumped the layer so i can fill the circle and instead of saving as ppm i can save it as bin uh, right, and I can save it to bin, right, if I try to do it right now, um, we have a bin, uh, so, and the size of the whole sort of model is uh, 40,000 bytes, and in case of PPM, it's like 18 megabytes, so it's really compact, and this is basically a sequence of 32-bit floats, right, uh, IEEE 754, um, you know, floats. So, and that's basically the model, uh, and we have a way to save it, to restore it, and so on and so forth. So, maybe we're going to start with smaller uh, models, right, even though they're, um, I don't know, maybe 50 by 50. Mm -hmm. uh, so, let's just go ahead and try to generate some random stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. Okay. Now, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. We can quite easily just uh, iterate several times. Um, let me actually introduce, uh, define sample size. Let's introduce like 10 samples, right? We're going to have 10 samples. Uh, then it's going to be I less than sample size plus plus i and i'm going to do uh, print f uh, in full generating um yeah rect uh, zero two um bin right so that's what we are generating but we also need to um create the file name at least right so i'm going to create a buffer file path the size of this thing is going to be 256 and i'm going to just use uh, sn printf right to print into that buffer size of file path and that's literally what i'm going to try to print in there right so and we're going to have a file path so in that way i can say uh, s file path there we go so i have a file path then i can try to generate a random a random rectangle right so that way i'll have to do layer fill rect um, not file but fill rect so this is going to be inputs and this is going to be inputs and now i need to generate a random rectangle right so i can maybe define these parameters like so Right, so x, uh, and I just need to understand, right, how to generate them. So I want to generate them in a particular range. Um, so it would be easier to do rand. Uh, so this is going to be width, uh, rand height. So then rand. So the rand is rather interesting. So I can also do width and height, but I don't want to make it zero so what i'm thinking is that maybe i'm going to introduce a function called rand range right so rand range uh, and in here we're going to have a low and high right so this is going to be low and high we can also assert something like low is always less than high right and if they are equal there's nothing much you can do about it and because of that we can uh, use the following thing right high minus low rand like this and then plus low and we can return this into i think so because of that the high is not going to be included i think high is not going to be included and that's something that we'll have to take into account um right that's something that we have to take into account Mm, so and in here we can do rand range zero uh, width rand uh, range zero height uh, rand range ram range uh, but this doesn't have to be zero it has to be one uh, right and similarly similarly this has to be a height 
this has to be high. So in that way, we can generate some stuff. Though, before we can do all of that, we're using the same region over and over again. Maybe we can do a little bit of a trick where I just do width, uh, height, and I fill everything with zero, right? So I essentially fill the entire layer with zero. Then I generate a random rectangle and I save it somewhere, right? So then I can say layer, save as bin uh, inputs, and I can use the file path that I have in here, right? So I'm going to remove this entire thing for uh, for now. Um, might as well also. Mm -mm. Uh, save as PPM. So basically, we're going to have the the model, right? The input, and also its representation for for humans. Right, presentation for humans. So generating a uh, rect uh, D, right, so it's going to be I. And in here, I think I'm going to just do something like this. Save as, pip, uh, as bin, and then we can do a similar thing for uh, PPM. And then we can say layer save as PPM inputs file path. There we go. Inputs file path. And uh, as you can see, we're generating some shit and <laughs> Okay, so uh, that's fine. It's totally fine. I just forgot to do this thing. And, and we really... Okay, so it generated some stuff. And uh, as you can see now, we have these things. And uh, of course, I did a fucky wacky and quite possibly oopsie doopsie. Uh, and I think it was warning me about all of that. So uh, that's totally fine. Uh, let me remove uh, some of this stuff. So it's going to be basically PM. Uh, that's a lot of garbage. Uh, and let me remove all of that as well. Uh, and all of that as well. Uh, you know what? I think I'm going to create a repo git ignore. Uh, and I'm going to just git ignore this entire thing. And then git init. Uh -huh. And we're going to save everything just in case. Uh, ready, set, go. Right. And now I should be able to generate some garbage about that. Um, so, just a second. Uh -huh. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And I'm running this entire thing. And as you can see, here is the garbage I was talking about. So we have 10 different things. And here are different rectangles, right? So some of them go outside, right? Some of them go outside. And I don't really like the fact that they're mostly um, sticking to the edge. Right, if you know what I mean, they're mostly sticking to the edge. So maybe we'll have to do something slightly different. Though we can use a random number generator, right? We can use a random number generator to just keep gen generating different inputs uh, and train the model, right? So let's try to do this similar thing to uh, circles, right? Let's try to do a similar thing to circles. So, so this is the random rectangle. So I'm just I'm just thinking how I can approach all of that. Um, so I would like to maybe extract the algorithm, the way I generate a random rectangle into a separate function so I can substitute it with like a random circle. Uh, right, so layer random rect. So here I'm gonna ex uh, accept the layer. And uh, then later, and then later I can just like uh, move this into anything in here. Right, so there we go layer random rect and uh, so this one is going to be inputs um, all right it's taking some time i want to take a look at some of the uh, warnings in here um oh okay so that that makes sense i'd like to move this stuff really really close to main so nobody else can see those global variables and thus it will fail properly all right so this is going to be layer and this is going to be layer as well it's going to be later as well. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. 
Mm -mm -mm. Okay, go. Generating rectangles. So, and I also want to check how can I generate a random circle. If I try to generate random circle like so. Uh, layer, layer. So, it's essentially going to be similar to random rectangle. Right. Mm, but, instead, we're going to have a random center and a random radius. But the radius is kind of tricky, so I'm going to just keep it uh, up to width. Right, so here we're going to have a circle, uh, CX, CY, then the radius, and this is going to be 1. So I'm going to use the name Rect for now, right, but might as well just do circle. Right, so circle, uh, because I'm just using that to debug the random algorithm, right. I'm just debugging the random algorithm. And let's take a look at the random circles. Uh, <laughs> Nice random circle, thank you very much. Uh, I don't know what happened, uh, because I never actually called the random circle, of course. Yeah. Okay, so random circle, that's a pretty big circle. Uh -huh. So these are, that's a pretty big circle as well. Uh, it would be nice to come up with an algorithm that always generates the circles within uh, you know, within the boundaries, so they don't go outside, because I think it may screw up the algorithm, the learning algorithm. Um, okay. Mm -mm. Those are some damn fine circles. Yeah, I mean, I'm just using the circle formula to generate them. <laughs> so just, I'm literally using the definition of a circle to generate the circle. <laughs> uh, so, okay, in terms of a radius, Right, so essentially we can think of it this way. Rand is bad for generating 2D things. Yeah, I do everything wrong. Zazin, Zazin, you're doing everything wrong. Oh my God, stop. Zazin, what are you doing? Everything is wrong. Whatever you're using is bad for what you're trying to do. Don't do that, Zosin. You're making a terrible mistake. Stop, Zosin, stop. Stop, what are you doing? Think about the children. Uh, okay, so that fucked up my keyboard, by the way. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, so, yeah, I, I lost my keyboard and I have no way to buy a new one because I live in Russia. <laughs> so I'm pretty much fucked. Um, I don't know, just a second, though my mouse works, right, so I don't know what's up with my keyboard, oh, there we go, so keyboard works. Okay, so we have some sort of like a thing in here, uh, and essentially we just pick a random point in here somewhere, right? And what we can do, we can use the maximum radius as the minimum between these four things, right? So we have these four things and we can uh, basically pick the smallest one and use that as the radius uh, limit, right? If you know what I mean. So we can do something like that. Um... Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> and how I'm going to do that, um, so I think I can do something like int max or max int, right? And if uh, r is greater than cx, right, we can say that um, it's going to be equal to cx. If it is mm, greater than cy, it's going to be equal to cy. If it's greater than uh, width minus cx. Uh, if I subtract with minus cx, what is it going to give me? It doesn't really matter because we have clamping there. So even even if we go like a little bit outside, uh, it's not going to be that critical, I think. Right. So it's going to be a little bit critical, a little bit bad, but it's not super critical. So I just want to keep the circles within uh, within all of that. And then uh, we can do r, uh, rand range 0r. You see what I mean? So it's just like, um, yeah, 
so first we use it as the range then we just clamp everything like around um, and then just like you know generate the random thing I'm not sure how good of an idea this is but uh, int max so I probably need to input the limits Right, so this is going to be the limits and we're generating some circles and here is the first circle here is another one uh here is another one is it like fully i think something fucked up in here so let me take a look at fair yeah i think this one is fucked up for for some reason i don't know huh. um, but generally generally they are kind of within this entire thing i wonder why uh, oh yeah, I see. I see why. Okay, cool. So now they should be a little bit better, uh, especially the last ones. Right. So that one is fine. That one is fine. That one is fine. That one. Yeah. So th that was my goal, right? Just keep them within the uh, the entire area, right? Just keep them within. I think that's pretty good. So we can try to do something similar for the rectangle as well, right? For the rectangle as well. Uh, let me define prefix. Uh, so this is going to be circle. And then here I'm going to do prefix. And this one is going to be also prefix. Okay. So it does that. And I can change that to rect. And this one to rect. And now we're doing rectangles, and in the rectangles, uh, they quite often stick to to the edge. So what I'm thinking is, what I'm thinking is that. Oh, by the way, I think I did the fucking work. It has to be at least one, right? So that's very important. That is very, very important. Very, very important. Uh, this thing will never be equal to width and height, uh, I'm pretty sure. So everything is fine in here. So that's a good algorithm. Uh, for width and height, we can do a similar thing, right? So um, we can just set width to the width. Uh, and if, not really width, but minus x. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually very good. Rand range one uh, minus x and this one minus y. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so that, that's that's a good way to do that. Uh, right. And oh shit, fuck, damn, damn. So the, sometimes they're equal to one. Yikes. Um, because sometimes they can become one. Hmm. Sometimes they can become one, and this is true for radius as well. At some point, it may become uh, this thing. So I can do additional thing. If r is less than two, it's going to be two, and the same goes for width. Um, right. So we can always uh, make it two. Mm -hmm. mm -mm, mm -mm. If width. Uh, is less than two is going to be equal to and then this one is just going to be equal to width right and similarly uh, i'm going to query replace w with h and this <laughs> this is height right it's the opposite of width the opposite of width is hid is that even a word i don't think so but i mean yeah um Okay, so what we have in here, and if we take a look at some of these rectangles, they are, yeah, they kind of like, it's very interesting. Oh yeah, okay, that's cool. So I really wanted to make sure that we have a more or less strong algorithm for generating different things, right? For generating different things because i don't want to store anything on the hard drive except the trained model uh so basically i want to use the uh the random number generator to train the model on uh sort of like different things and then uh i'm gonna check that on a different set of random things so essentially the input data for training is going to be the seed of the random number generator if you know what i mean 
so that's gonna be basically the idea all right so let me remove all of the ppm things right so this is gonna be ppm uh and uh then we're gonna do a pin and there we go so this is what we have so i might as well uh just commit everything we have in here mm -mm. Add algorithms for generating random input data, right? So I'm going to push that. I have nowhere to push that stuff yet. So maybe maybe the time has come to, to push it somewhere. Mm. Maybe the time has come to push it somewhere to GitHub, for instance. But to push it to GitHub, I think I need to create a readme and also the license and stuff like that. So let me create a license. So it's going to be under MIT, then this is a readme, uh, and then I'm going to say uh, perceptron uh, inspired by veritasium video, and we have description in here, and uh, I'm going to just put this thing in here. Right. So quick start, uh, quick start uh, console build uh, build.sh and then we're gonna do main and that's gonna be it right add license and read me dot md oh boy uh, and let's actually create the entire thing uh, let's actually create the entire thing so perceptron uh, simple uh, perceptron implementation inspired inspired by veritasium video right so this one's going to be public of course and let me let me create the the repo and uh, let's actually put this like that okay uh, add origin and I'm going to push it right into the repo. Mm -hmm. um, did I push it already? I think I, I think I pushed it. Yeah, there we go. So you can find the source code in here. Um, and uh, you, you can find the video in the repo. You can find the video in the repo. Might as well update the uh, the project command super quick, just a second. Uh, but first, I'm going to put that in the description. Um, source uh, source code there we go so here is the source code uh, to, so this is today uh, that's a lot of stuff in the project command did cmd project um, mm, I can replace this thing in here because it's not that useful anyway I didn't even use anything from that article uh, so why do I use readme md instead of readme.org? Because they decided that bike shit is going to be read. Uh, okay, so we have random stuff. We have random stuff. It feels like we also have to choose the, um, the bias, I think. I'm not quite sure. So they use bias uh, 10, uh, but it feels like the model, the, the specific model is going to be essentially dependent on the bias we choose, right? So maybe it's going to converge towards that bias somehow. Um, I'm not really entirely sure on how to choose the bias. They didn't specify. So that might be a problem. Um, okay. <clears throat> uh, we'll also need a way to essentially subtract uh, and add the inputs from the weights, right? Um, so we have feed forward, and we need another function that accepts the inputs, right, and the weights and for instance adds the inputs to the weights 
or subtracts the inputs from the weights. I, I think it's going to be two different functions, the ones that adds um, and uh, the one that subtracts. I think I know um, how to call these things. I think I know how to call these things. Maybe the one that adds, right, the one that adds uh, is probably going to be like reward and the one that subtracts will be punish, but it doesn't really necessarily mean that. Um, okay, so we can just call it something like um, add inputs to weights, right? Add inputs to weights and this one is going to be sub inputs to weights from from weights uh, weights layer inputs layer weights all right so and in here mm -mm. so for y y less than height plus plus y for int x, x less than width plus plus x. Um, so weight y x. So this one adds the inputs, right? So this one adds inputs. Uh, another one is going to be subtracting them. So two separate functions. Two separate functions. I don't quite remember in when you add and when you subtract, right? So I probably want to actually watch that part of the video again to get the gist of what exactly is going on. Uh, just a second. So I'm going to go back to that video and just carefully watch what, what he says. Um, For hundreds of years, analog computers were the most powerful computers on Earth, predicting eclipse. Okay, so somewhere here. ...distinguish between two images, like a rectangle and a circle. For example, the output neuron could always fire when presented with a circle, but never when presented with a rectangle. Okay, so in our case, zero is going to be a rectangle, but one is going to be circle. To achieve this, the perceptron had to be trained, that is, shown a series of different circles and rectangles, and have its weights adjusted accordingly. We can visualize the weights as an image, since there's a unique weight for each pixel of the image. Initially, Rosenblatt set all the weights to zero. If the perceptron's output is correct, for example, here it's shown a rectangle and the output neuron doesn't fire, no change is made to the weights. But if it's wrong, then the weights are adjusted. The algorithm for updating the weights is remarkably simple. Here, the output neuron didn't fire when it was supposed to because it was shown a circle. So to modify the weights, you simply add the input activations to... Oh, okay, so I uh, see. So if you want it to fire in a particular case, you add it. But if you don't want it to fire, uh, you want to sort of suppress it, so you want to subtract it. So I think that's basically the idea. The weights. If the output neuron fires when it shouldn't, like here when shown a rectangle, well, then you subtract the input activations from the weights. Right, so if it's activating and you don't want it to be activated, you need to sort of suppress it, right? If it's not activated when you want it to be activated, you need to sort of excite it. So it might, this might be actually the names that we could use for these uh, functions, like suppress and excite, if you know what I mean, right? Um, but, but maybe it's, it's just like bike shading or something like that. So we can try to do it like that. Uh, okay, so now, um, excite, okay. I really want to make a small break because I want to refill my cup of water. I am running out of water, so let's make it, uh, you know, super quick. Um, um, okay, let's continue. So the thing I want to do is uh, very simple, actually. Uh, I want to use the random number generator as the input set for training. Um, so, for instance, I want to double check, I want to actually double check, for instance, if I set the, um, the seed and I just generate a bunch of random things, right, so 10, 10 numbers, let's say, right? 
and something like that. Rand. Uh, let's actually generate them like 100 or something. So if I take a look at this entire thing and I just run uh, the numbers, the um, yeah, run the numbers. This is the sequence, and I should be able to reset that sequence by just calling srand again, right? So that's that's true. That's kind of uh, this. This is going to be essential for the training algorithm, right? Being able to reset the whole thing. Yeah, there we go. So every time I call srand, it resets the state of the random number generator and it's basically what it is, right? So we're going to be using the random, um, you know, the seed 69 for training, right? So uh, we already have a, like a sample size. So let's actually set it to something like 100, right? And uh, we can start training, right? So we're going to just go through random samples, right? We're going to go through random samples. Uh, right, and if I just do something like that, sample, uh, sample size, plus plus i, All right, and we can start with generating a random rectangle, right, so we're generating a random rectangle, layer, uh, random, uh, random rect, right, so I provide the inputs, right, this is the inputs, then uh, with the current weights, uh, we can fit forward the entire thing, right? We fit forwarding. Uh, fit forward inputs into weights, and that will give us the output, and we can set some bias, right? So let's say uh, that if the, um, you know, the neuron fired, right, it's bigger than the bias, uh, we'll also have to set the bias to something. So uh, for now, we can just like experiment with the things. I don't really know what exactly it has to be. Let's set it to, uh, you know, 10 as, as, as in the video, right? As in the video. Uh, fit forward. So this is, if it's going to be greater than bias, it got excited, but we don't really want it uh, to be excited, right? So because it's supposed to be not excited uh, in case of a rect. So what we'll have to do in that case, we'll have to sub uh, inputs from the weights, right? So this is going to be inputs from the uh, weights. There we go. So then uh, we can do layer um, random circle, right? And this is going to be inputs. We can feed forward into the uh, into the weights one more time. So, and if it's less than a bias, it has to be excited. So we'll have to add this entire thing instead. Right after that, it doesn't really mean that the whole model is gonna work. So I think we'll have to repeat that uh, you know this process over and over again until all of these things sort of pass, if you know what I mean, right? So we'll have to repeat it until all of them pass. And the video says it converges, uh, but maybe it depends on on the bias where it converges. Maybe it converges towards some particular bias, right? Uh, who knows? So, and to achieve that, we'll need to be able to reset the state of the random number generator uh, because we'll have to pass it through the same data over and over again. So that's why I'm using srandom here. Um, so, yeah. And after that, we'll be able to save the model and then check it on a new data and confirm that this entire thing actually recognizes rectangles and uh, circles. Right, so uh, let me try to run this entire thing and see if it's gonna work or not. So undefined reference to add uh, inputs uh, to whatever, whatever it was called. Add inputs to weights. Why is it uh, add inputs to, is it called something differently? Where, so I made a typer, I don't see it. Uh, from, okay two weights yeah something with my with my eyes I'm really sorry about that okay so it actually worked right so the entire algorithm sort of uh you know worked worked and uh exited successfully so but again we don't repeat it several times i think we should repeat it several times what i want to do now i want to try to take the weights and save them as an image but currently our uh you know our algorithm does not recognize negative weights. So this is one of the problems, right? It doesn't recognize negative weights. So one of the things I want to do is um, basically calculate the maximum and minimum value of the weights and uh, then basically uh, lerp 
using that value, they're using that value between two different colors, right? So if it's negative, it's going to be like a red color. If it's positive, it's going to be closer to, to a green one, right? And that way we can maybe see the, the model, um, right, in, uh, in the form of an image of some sort, right? So that's probably what we can do. Mm -mm. So let's go ahead and try to do that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I think what we can do is just to have something like minimum, uh, which is going to be float max and maximum, which is initially going to be float min, uh, float min, right? Uh, then, so everything is getting dangerous. I don't know where to put my my cup. <clears throat> and so let me iterate. Zero uh, height plus plus y for x uh, width plus plus x plus plus x and in here if layer y x is less than minimum that means the minimum is going to be equal to this entire thing um, right then if it's greater than maximum uh, this is going to be the new maximum. So we know now we know the minimum and maximum. Um, okay, so we can also find sort of the the distance between them, but I'm not sure if it's that important. So I'm going to just keep it like that. Um, okay, so now I can do layer Y. Ah, shit, fuck, damn. Eh, where am I? Okay, um, Y and X. So now I need to subtract the minimum, right? And take this value and divide it by maximum minus minimum. And that is essentially the new scalar, right? This is the new scalar that we have to use in here. Um, though we'll have to do divided by PPM scalar, right? So that's another thing that is very important here. Um, okay, so, and we have to use the scalar to blend between two colors, right? So we have to blend between two colors. How are we going to be blending between two colors? I think I'm not going to care about the gamma correction right now. Just couldn't be bothered to, uh, to care about it. Um, <clears throat> We can do the following thing. So the bigger the entire thing, right? The bigger the entire thing, m the more red we, we have. Uh, this um, the smaller the entire thing, the more green we're going to have. Or maybe, maybe it's the other way around. I think. So if it's more positive, that means it's towards. Uh -huh, so that means it's more green. Uh -huh, so they, they're opposite each other. So I think that's the way to go in here. Um, yeah, that's the way to go in here. So after that, I can just do a layer, save as PPM, right? So this is going to be a save as PPM. I'm going to take the weights and I'm going to save them as weights uh, PPM. So uh, let's go ahead and just try to train the entire thing. So float max, is it max float? Uh, I don't remember. Maybe it's a FLT max. Uh, okay, C limits float max. Let's go. Uh, so there is a FLT max exponent. Mm. This is rather interesting. Uh, so numeric limits. Let's actually take a look. Do, 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 something something FLT. Uh, FLT minimum. Oh, it has to be flow.h, I see. Uh, so it is FLT min and FLT max. Uh, and I have to do flow.h. Right, so it's gonna float h. Okay, cool. Uh, and I think it uh, it's saved, so we should have weights PPM, and we're about to take a look at them. This is the model. Isn't that cool? I think that's pretty cool. That is actually very fucking cool, look at that. Huh. 
And yeah. <laughs> That's actually very really cool. Um, so we can increase the amount of samples, like sample rates on good 100, let's say 500. Uh, right, so it's gonna take some time. And uh, yeah. And you can see some patterns emerging, right? So there's like circles in there and uh, yeah, squares and whatnot. Uh, so yeah, so it's, it's a data inside of a brain. Um, okay. Let me, let me see, let me see. So we, we probably need to repeat the entire thing. We need to repeat the entire thing. Mm -mm. I would like to extract a single sort of train pass into a separate function, right? So let's do it like this. And it should return boolean telling us if like uh, everything is trained correctly, right? Train pass. Uh, we're gonna provide maybe what do we have to provide actually? Oh, maybe not. Let's, let's keep it like this. Um, layer inputs, uh, layer weights. Right. And let me move the entire thing in here. So it's going to be train pass, inputs, weights. Right. Inputs, weights. And most important thing, uh, we're going to have something like done. Uh -huh. And if at any point we'll have to adjust anything, I'm going to say done is, let's say it is initially true, right? And if at any point we have to adjust anything, we're going to say that it's not done and we're going to return done. So, and that will allow us to call this thing in a loop constantly, right? You see what I mean? Mm, call it in a loop constantly. Uh, we can try to see if it's going to converge or not. Right, so for, um, I don't know, how can we do that? So the easiest thing to do in here is just do while, all right, and just to move this into, I think, to while. Um, just for computers, uh, let all the loops break, let all return done. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Uh, okay, where is my, oh, God damn it. Train pass um, inputs wait right so we can try to do something like that but I'm not sure if it's gonna convert properly so I'm a little bit afraid of that so let me try to just um, do like a fixed amount of passes for now right so just a fixed amount of passes to see if it's gonna be okay or not. Boolean done, and while it is doing the passes, right? Mm, training passes. Mm -hmm, simple size. Uh -huh, train passes. Uh, I'm gonna have 10 of them. So this is done. Uh, and in here, we're gonna have something like S, right? Done, uh, true, false. Uh, then we're gonna save the entire thing. Uh, we don't have a boolean apparently, so let's include std bool. Uh -huh. uh, and it's false. Mm -hmm. In all the cases, it was false, and then after several passes, it sort of became like this. Interesting. It will be also kind of cool. Okay, so I have an epic idea. What if we also. Uh, save like for each individual pass right so this is the first pass this is another pass this is another pass and so on and so forth just to see how it sort of converges so to speak if you know what I mean um, I'm not sure if it's gonna converge but we can try Th though by the way I have an idea what if instead of done we would print how many times it had to be adjusted right so I think, I think it's a little better. So we're gonna return uh, like this, adjust it zero times, adjust it, uh, right. So, and then you can decide, or maybe print if you want to. Uh, so how many times it had to be adjusted? Uh, one, only once? I can't, can't believe that. Um, 
Am I an idiot? Oh yeah, I am an idiot. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, 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 look at that. Look at that. It, it actually reduces. The amount of times you have to do that is actually reduced. This is so cool. Okay, so what if I do 20 times? Does it... It does reduce. It's, it's actually very cool. I really like that. Okay. Uh-huh. So what about 100 of them? Yo, it converges. I was afraid that it's never gonna... But it does converge. Holy shit. And this is converged algorithm. Huh. What the fuck? Mm -mm. I hope I'm, I'm using the word converge correctly in this case. Hmm. That's pretty cool. Uh, you know, again, I wanted to just check uh, how it evolves, right? So we can try to save uh, the the thing every time we do a pass, right? So every time we do a pass. So in this case, again, um, since it converges, right? I can like more or less safely put it in here uh, and just do the while, right? But I still need to keep track of the uh, of the iteration. Mm. Okay. Mm. <sighs> okay, okay, okay. So this is something like that. Uh, we can print the entire thing. And then we need to have a file path 256, right? At least for now. Uh, then uh, adjust it these times, right? So adjust it these times. Um, then we need to do a send printf file path size of file path um, weights uh, 0 to ppm. Mm, so it's gonna be i. I'm not gonna make the same mistake anymore. Then I'm saving the file path. Right, I just it. Um, we can also do something like this s. Mm -hmm. I'll pass. Mm. So, and if ADG less or equal than zero, we're gonna essentially break out of the loop. So, uh, we still have a limited amount of these things, and we also break out if we converged. Right. So, okay, that is pretty cool. We're slowly going down. Uh huh. Okay. Nice. So, and these are essentially the you know iterations. The thing we can do now, we can do fair ppm, right? And uh, I probably want to do a background for fair, like slightly different background. I don't remember how to do that. Background. Um. Uh, use style as a background for transparent images. Okay, so I think what I have to do is um, B black. Yeah, there we go. So, okay, so this is the first iteration, and this is how it basically evolves over time. God damn it. Over time. Huh. That's very interesting. It doesn't really change that much. Um, right? So this is the this is the first, second, right? Uh -huh. And then it goes towards, uh, you know. Huh. This is very cool. You can then turn it into GIF of some sort, I think. And this is backwards, right? So I'm going backwards. Holy shit, this is so cool. Like that. So uh, you probably can't see that because of the bitrate, right? So, but if I can see that, it's so fucking cool. And I would suggest you to try to code this yourself and just see how cool it is. Um, okay. Uh, all right. So uh, another thing I would like to do 
is probably check it on um, on a different set of data. Mm, right. So we, we train uh, train pass, and let's actually do something like uh, check pass. Right. So it's gonna be layer inputs and also layer weights. The thing about the check pass is gonna be the same as train pass, right? It's gonna be literally the same as train pass, but it's not gonna adjust anything, right? So it's it's only gonna count, uh, you know, the the times when it didn't answer correctly, uh, only the times when it didn't answer correctly. Okay, so and after that, uh, we can do the following thing. Uh, I'm gonna do check pass, right, and it's inputs and weights, but we're gonna use a different seed this time. We're gonna use 420, uh, and we're gonna see how many times it actually failed, right? How many times it fails. So the uh, trained uh, model failed, um, model failed times. Uh, we can basically calculate the, um, you know, the error rate of some sort, right? So it's gonna be ADG. Uh, all right, so let's actually retrain it. So instead of retraining it all the time, I think I should just save it in binary and then load it up all the time, right? Every time I need to, you know, I need to check that. Okay, model failed 439 times. <laughs> nice. So, yeah. <laughs> On a completely different data, it failed <laughs> miserably. Uh, this is nice. I really like that. Uh, so the error rate is just horrible. <laughs> uh, nice. Mm. Maybe we can just have more passes, if you know what I mean. But can we have more passes? We can increase the sample size, right? So it's going to be thousand of them, uh, and the uh, you know the the maximum train pass is going to be two hundred. And we're not going to save the PPM because we already saw the weights, so there's no point in like doing that. I think, right? So this is going to be something like that. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so let's give it a try. Um, oh shit! Something something went wrong. Uh, because it's a file path, I don't need file path anymore. Uh -huh. So let's see. Mm -mm. It's kind of cool that it does in fact converge. Interestingly, interestingly, we can just take the model, right? Something like srand. Uh, just use 420. Uh, the untrained model failed like this amount of times, right? So, and then um, we can check how the model has improved. So, the untrained model failed thousand times. That's what's interesting. So, it failed thousand times, but after it was trained, it actually failed less times, didn't it? I, th I think it did. Right, so it's like, yeah. So if you never train, it's actually like fails even even more. Um, so we can actually do something like a fail rate. Uh, the fail rate of untrained model is uh, something like F, where we're gonna do ADG divided by the sample size, right? So this is a sample size, but it's not really a sample size, it's Right, because we have two um, two samples per this uh, per uh, per this thing, so it has to be divided by by two. So I would love to also, yeah, I think I think that's fine. So fail rate of trained model. It's gonna be something like this. Uh, all right. So the fail rate of untrained model is like. Uh, half, right, and after it was trained, did it improve anything? Right, so it improved from 0.5 to 
to this. So that's basically the improvement, 20% improvement. Right, at, at least we, this is something measurable, right? <laughs> At least it is something measurable, like it moves towards that. We can just keep increasing maybe the uh, sample size, right? So maybe a bigger sample size, um, you know, is going to produce a better situation. Mm. Statistically significant, maybe. <laughs> yeah, it is actually. Yeah. Mm hmm. Will it ever converge? That's a good question. Will it ever converge? Please converge, please, please. Fuck. Ooh, it didn't converge, but it actually improved. Look at that, the fail rate improved. So um, let's actually remove the passes thingy, but might as well just like make it bigger. Like, all right, so let's give me something like this. Mm hmm. The baby boat is learning. Yeah, we're learning how to distinguish between circles and uh, rectangles. It's it's actually kind of interesting how it starts to converge like slower and slower and slower, which is I guess understandable. Adjust the bias. It's not a bad idea actually, but. I wonder how would it be better to adjust the bias? Um, diminishing returns, yeah. Mm -mm. Logarithm and learning rate, yeah. Uh, how to choose a bias for this thing? It's very interesting. It's a very interesting question. I, I suppose it would depend on the actual outputs that we see. But maybe it doesn't really matter. It's just like converges towards a specific bias. To some biases, it might be converging better. Um, right? Who knows? Maybe to bias like 100, it would be better. Mm. Normal perception uh, use a sigmoid function to clamp the result between 0 and 1 and then use error as a factor in training, I think. Yeah, yeah. But I, I'm just going off of the video, right? I'm going off of entirely of the video and I would presume that at like when the original perceptron was created people didn't really think much about like this sigmoid function not though it would be interesting to read the original paper on perceptron um right so and it's like really it, it is improving but it is improving very slowly so keep in mind it's a very naive implementation going off of a small segment of the veritasium video so that's what it was essentially uh, right, and it's already kind of works, right? So you can have a model that kind of distinguishes the thing better than just like um, than nothing. So it was interesting. So I suppose the next step would be uh, like maybe read the original paper on the perceptron that was like originally created and maybe like adjust the source code of our program to be aligned with what's written there and maybe this is something that i'm gonna do off screen already and maybe at some point i'm gonna make like an offline video about that uh so let me actually commit whatever we have or whatever i have already so oh shit, and it also has a lot of these things okay uh to to do to right implement a simple train of the perceptron Right, I'm gonna push that right into the video, uh, right into the repo. Uh, and also let me git clean FDX uh, everything. So I'm already streaming for two hours and uh, that's basically everything I wanted to, to check today. I think today's stream was rather interesting. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Veritasium, for making that video because yeah, 
It's, it's like very clear and very straightforward explanation that you can just take and try to implement. Uh, now you can just go and play with this code. You basically have like a simple framework and you just can play with biases, maybe with like functions to clamp things around and just see well, right, how it's going to improve everything. But yeah, so I really hope this is not my last stream, but I, I have a feeling that the like i'm not really gonna have that much time to stream in the future and not that much resources to actually dedicate like well, to to that full time right so essentially i'm already preparing to try to find a full-time job so we'll see we'll see we'll see we'll see so the only thing i wish right now is for the war to end so and everyone to be safe anyway Thanks everyone who's watching me right now. I really appreciate it. Have a good one. And I hopefully see you next time on the yet another Zosin session. Stay safe everyone. Love you. Mwah.